Hello, this is Ryan Womack, Data Librarian at Rutgers University, and we're back for part four of Hands-On Big Data, the Hands-On Big Data Workshop. In part three, we set up a Hadoop cluster on Amazon EMR, and in part four, we are now going to run a few things on it. In particular, we're going to look at Pig and Hive, and I'll explain what those are. Um, before I do that, I'll just describe this one last slide on Amazon S3. Amazon S3 is the simple storage service at Amazon and provides low-cost, easily accessible storage. A great advantage of this, if you're running on Amazon EMR, is Amazon EMR has direct access to the S3 storage. So it's very rapidly loaded in to that environment. Uh, you don't have long upload transfer times, things like that. And you can also store your output in an S3 location, uh, which are called buckets. You can make those buckets public so that other people can uh, gain access to the data sources. And so it's, it's a useful thing to use. And after we do the first pig example, I'll go into S3 for a second and show you how to create a bucket. All right, so pig is uh, one of the, the first intermediate languages that has been developed to deal with analysis in the Hadoop environment. As we saw earlier, a MapReduce program written in a native programming language requires that programming expertise and knowledge of the data structures. and It can be time consuming, so you've got to write something customized in Java or Python or whatever. Um, PIG is designed to remove some of that barrier and um, this is another, you know, sort of uh, cutesy at the whim of the developer name for a project, but it is called the PIG project. The programming language is actually called PIG Latin and um, not the same Pig Latin that you learned in grade school. And we'll see kind of a theme running through some of these things of cutesy names. Uh, Pig was originally developed at Yahoo, and in comparison to Hive, it is a little bit more open-ended in its structure and syntax. So it's, it's like a simplified programming language in a way that hides a lot of the complexity of what it's doing behind the simple code. So you can write a simple statement that's going to go out and execute across all the machines in your cluster. Uh, we are going to use the Hue environment that we saw at the end of part three to run our pig examples. So there's a pig editor in Hue and if you're interested there's also a command line interface called grunt naturally um, but we're going to use the, the editor in Hue. Uh, I have on the slide the default login and password for Hue, but it, it looks like, at least in my current session, that you can type in whatever you like for that first um, launch of Hue. So what we're going to do is analyze the complete works of Shakespeare. We're going to just do a word count of Shakespeare's works. The original file that I'm working from is linked here in the slides if you want to get a hold of that. Uh, but I've already put it up on my S3 bucket. All right, so we're going to go into the Hue environment. Uh, once again, if you're in the EMR console, you just click on Hue and you'll get, get there. And I'm going to go to Query Editors, and I'll go to Pig. And I have a, a, a simple but functional um, environment here to write commands. So I can start typing commands in the center area. Uh, I have some help on the on the right hand side that will remind me of you know some of the functions I can tap into. We'll be using the count function in just a second. Um, so a little reference to things that that can be be accessed. And I'm just going to pull the um, or copy the the script that we're going to run from our GitHub site. So remember the materials are at github.com/ryan data/ big data. 
So if you go to that directory, you will see a file that says wordcount.pig. Click on that, and you can just copy and paste that few lines of text into the pig editor. Okay, before I run this, I'll just step through what's going on. Uh, we're not going to get into details about syntax, but just, you know, to illustrate how this works and get a feel for it. We have the first line, we are loading the data, so we're loading it directly from the S3 location, the big data bucket, one, two, threes, uh, where the Shakespeare.txt resides. And let me say, so this should just run for you in your own environment without any uh, special preparations. Um, I will I will maintain access to the Shakespeare file in my big data bucket uh, until a year after this workshop was created, so let's say June 2016. I don't really guarantee that it'll be up there after that, so if you are accessing this at a later date, you can um, put your own data up somewhere and run a word count on that. So then we have the second line where we are taking our loaded data and running through it and breaking it into words. Uh, that's what this function is doing. Then we group the words and then in the fourth line we are counting the words with the count function. Then finally we store that output into a, a file that is on the cluster itself in a, in a directory on the cluster. So let's go ahead and run that. Notice that each line ends with a semicolon. That's just a syntactic feature. And let's run this and hope that this goes through. So now we see that actually uh, it's a little different than running something on your local machine. We are reminded that it is a, a bit more complex job. Uh, we put the script into a queue, then it starts to run, then it starts to generate our relatively complex log output that reminds us that there's a lot of stuff going on here of the job being split upon, upon, among multiple machines. And this is a small file, so it should run relatively quickly. Um, and once it's done, we'll get a message that it's complete. And we can then start looking for the output. So we're now at 50%. I'll just let this run and not try to... And, and, and now at 100%. Seem to be doing pretty well. We're OK. And... Now we're green. Okay, so now the job is complete. This is a good result. Um, so I can also go over to the job browser. And if I do that, I'm going to lose my uh, program file because I haven't saved the script. I could save it, and then I'd have access to it later if I keep my cluster running. Um, but I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to lose access to my script we, we ran successfully, not a big deal. Um, so now we can see um, I've actually been on this system a little bit uh, playing around with a few other things. So I have some other jobs that ran, but we, our latest one, the Pig Latin script, has succeeded. And it was actually launched by a thing called Uzi. Uh, you'll see Uzi pop up in different locations when you're browsing around here. Uzi is the task scheduler uh, in the Hadoop environment. So Uzi received the request that we wanted to run a pig script, and it said, OK, let's get started with that, and, and started running it. Um, from this screen, we can also access the log files. So if something did not succeed, we'd get a message that said failed. And we could then go into the logs look at the error logs, the st standard error, and see what might have caused that. Now here we had a few things dumped to the error log, which were apparently relatively minor. I mean, they're not things that stopped the job. Uh, so we, we were okay with that. And our syslog messages uh, record all those sort of steps that we saw pop up on the screen.
So the logs are maintained. We can figure out what happened. We can also look at metadata and see when things happened, how long a job took to run, how much uh, memory and things was it using. And this, again, might help us in diagnostics of performance later on. So the, again, the interface makes it easy to access all that. But right now, I want to go straight to the file itself. So I'm going to go to the file browser. And in this case, I saved it uh, under the hue directory. So I go to user, user, hue, pig, pig word count. Okay, so it created this directory as part of my output and I have a success message and I also have uh, the actual output. And I can pull that up and browse it on the screen. So you can see this is a long list, 150 page word list uh, that I could also then um, download from the file browser and to my local machine if I wanted to. And if I go through this, I can s first thing I notice is um, there's some you know some little fragments here that are getting counted. So some of these are probably you know page numbers, line numbers, um, strange bits of things. So uh, the as is a word as. So we're, there are 1,400 occurrences of as. That makes sense. But we also have you know c colon is being counted. Um, I would I would say this is not a very cleaned up file. Uh, not something you'd want to use for authoritative word count of Shakespeare. Uh, kind of a rough and ready OCR, perhaps, of, of Shakespeare. But it does work, and if we scroll down, we start to get to the longer words. Um, we can see here's uh, sapient, one occurrence, sapless, twice, satisfy, 21, saucily, two. So it's all there, and it it completed this job and we could throw that same algorithm against a much larger corpus uh, that would would be handled just as well on a Hadoop cluster. Uh, this would be a good time to point out that you don't you don't run a Hadoop cluster for speed um, you run it because you can't handle that volume of data any other way there's a bit of overhead that just comes with splitting the job among multiple machines and putting it back together um, so you're not going to gonna get faster performance than you would on a small job that could run on a single machine. Um, but it, it's if your data can't be handled any other way. So the examples that I'm showing here are mostly relatively small, um, but they work the same way that they would if you were pointing them at true big data sources. Alright, so that is a word count of Shakespeare and we've seen pig in action. We've seen um, our, I'll, let me just paste this in here one more time, uh, a little pig program that that gives you a flavor for how a pig program would work. And we've seen the pig editor that, that lets us manage these um, chunks of pig code and run and submit them to our cluster. So there's a lot of functionality here um, and we could do all this on the command line as well. We can submit jobs on the command line um, in in pig Latin um, and you'd want to do that as you again built up a more production oriented system. But this is a great exploratory system. Alright, so let me take a moment to talk about S3. S3 is the storage environment for Amazon. And so I'm just clicking on that from the AWS homepage. And I have these things called buckets. So a bucket is simply a storage location. You could think of it as a directory name. They call it a bucket. Um, and the one restriction of creating a bucket is the name has to be unique globally. Uh, having just watched the Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh, uh, the same as a horse 
a, a horse's name in horse racing. It has to be unique in the registry. No one else can have that. So you have to think of something um, that is not anywhere else. So if I do big data bucket um, 369, um, I can create that. That's not available. Somebody is using that. It might even, even have been me in the past creating a similar pattern. Uh, let's do 370. That no one has taken before. I can create it. And I have my data bucket. This is now immediately accessible to me. I can use it in my account. I can point my scripts at it. I can store output in it. And I can also make it public by going under permissions and adding the permission for example to everyone to let everyone list view permissions you at least want to have them list and view the, the file if you do want to make it something that others can download you could also create an open space where other people can put data may be a little risky for your you know storage quotas and stuff you will get billed for the amount of storage you're using uh, this is much cheaper to leave on for a long time than a cluster you're talking you know cents um, unless you get into really big data amounts really big data volumes but for for demo purposes not that expensive and once I've uh, added these permissions I can then say save and now I have a new publicly accessible uh, directory that I could have other people download data from and again for those of you who might be accessing this once big data bucket one two three is not working anymore for whatever reason uh, just go into s3 create a bucket and use that bucket location in your scripts uh, you'd have to modify the script to replace this location with your own but uh, otherwise everything should work fine Okay, let me pause the video here and we'll come back with Hive.